What's going on, family? It's your man, Daryl Alder the second. I hope you're doing well. Um, <laughs> got my day started early, preparing for work. I just want to drop this quick message, and the message is just praise him. Um, there are so many opportunities that come along to try to take the praise of the Lord out of our mouth, to try to focus on things in our life that aren't going our way, or to try to make us um, complain. And you know, one thing God doesn't like is complaints. It's not that he doesn't want us to come before him and, and lament and share our heart, but he doesn't want us to become preoccupied or become unthankful uh, when we find ourselves in difficult circumstances. He wants to, to remind us to give him praise. When you praise God, there's something transformational about the atmosphere. It lightens. When you give God glory, it lifts the burdens off of you uh, because it's an opportunity for you to shift your attention on him. It's an opportunity for you to take your mind off of what you're going through and to magnify him. The Bible says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. I've said this before, um, but magnification is, is something, it enlarges something, whatever you're focusing on. And so when you focus on the Lord, you know, he becomes enlarged in your life and in your mind, I should say. Um, his presence becomes more abundant when you start to worship him and praise him. And so I just want to encourage you today, don't let the atmosphere you're around sour your praise for God. You might be the sweetness that God has placed somewhere to bring a transformational um, change in that atmosphere. Um, or you could be the sourness to the enemy's camp, but the change for somebody else there. And so I just want to say, give God praise. He says he inhabits the praises of his people. Give God praise. Um, there's a song by Fred Hammond that says, I will bless his holy name. And I think it's based on the psalm. And I encourage you today to praise him. Psalm 150 says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So let that be you today. Praise God. Don't get caught up in your situation. Praise God. Well, Paul, I'm looking over because I'm actually waiting to get to work today. I have a door opener for my lock to, to get in my cage and the, the door opener for whatever reason, the battery dies and now I'm stuck waiting on someone else to show up. Uh, so I'm just going to say this. <clears throat> when Paul was in prison, you know, it was a tough situation to be in, but he praised God. He worshiped God. And when he did, an earthquake happened and transformation occurred and people there got saved. Wherever you are, praise God, praise him and know that he's going to make the situation work out for your good. If there's anybody watching, you don't have a relationship with God, the father. The only way to have one with the father is first to have one with his son. This comes through a confession of faith and a belief in your heart that Jesus is Lord, that he died on the cross and that God, the father raised him back from the dead. If you confess this with your mouth and believe in your heart that you will be saved from the penalty of your sins because Jesus came on that cross and died for you. He was the perfect sacrifice. He did what we could not do. He lived a perfect life. And when you place your faith in him, then his righteousness becomes your righteousness because our righteousness alone, our self-righteousness cannot get us into heaven, but his righteousness can. So if you want to know Jesus, and it's important you do because when you don't know him, when you die, you're not going to go to heaven, you're going to go to hell. And when we die, there's only two places to go, heaven or hell. And if you don't know Jesus, you're not getting into heaven. It's not about your works. Works have their place, but works don't get you into heaven. Faith in Jesus does. Now, you will be scrutinized at times. You'll be hated and different things. But the Bible says those who endure to the end shall be saved. God has your back. He says, many say, Lord, many, not all who say, Lord, Lord, are mine, but those who do the will of my Father. So let that be you today. If you're interested, just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. I believe God the Father raised you back from the dead. I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. If you meant that, then his spirit is now resting in your heart and you are headed to heaven. You have salvation. Your name is written in the book of life. And angels are celebrating and dancing in heaven because you have been set free. I recommend, it's important, get in a Bible-based church. Watch God transform your life and get baptized in water because you've got to be born again of water and of spirit. I gotta go. My name is Daryl Alda the second. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Uh, before I do, let's do what I normally do. I forgot to do at the beginning. Right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to share your word, and I thank you for the souls that heard it. I thank you that more will come to your kingdom, and I pray that you're glorified in this process. Um, I pray, Lord, that you have your way in everybody's life on this, including my own. In Jesus' name, Amen. Oh, God bless you. Peace.